now, here's Ed Bernstein. Hey, welcome to our show. I'm sitting here over at Jing. What, you haven't heard about Jing yet? I mean, you must not live in Summerlin. And even if you don't live in Summerlin like me, I drive, okay, you know I drive 15 miles, to guys, to get up here to well, have thank dinner. thank you. Jing is in downtown Summerlin. With me is Tom uh, Greasy and, um, and Roy Saunders. Roy is the general manager, and Tom is the chef. Yes, sir. Right? Now, you both, uh, you, you, I mean, you're a long time Las long Vegas. Time Vegas. You have a, you know, a history uh, in and out of Vegas for a lot of years. Absolutely. Um, it's, it's a tough decision when you have an established career and somebody is a new restaurant opening and you're taking a chance, right? Isn't that a risk? You do. A big chance, actually, yeah. yeah. And what were some of the things that you thought about, uh, Roy? Because I mean, you, you were, were over at the Wynn. I was know. at the Wynn for you've been every, you've almost, been, you've yeah. been almost at every great restaurant in town over the years that I know of. Yep. Yeah. Yep. The last one was Andrea's and probably that Prime Steakhouse, Kokomo's. Um, you have that security blanket, you know, when you're with a big company and you have a, a dynamic uh, feature, uh, figure like uh, Steve Wynn and you have a lot of confidence. Right. So all of a sudden you get an opportunity to kind of venture out and do your own thing and, and create something really special. But there's always that, you know, when you have one owner, there's a lot of risk involved there. Because as you know, I mean, nine out of 10 restaurants fail. For sure. And yeah. we also went through some really tough times with the, with the COVID. And uh, every day it was, it was a little challenging. But what about Jing specifically it was interesting to you? Well, you know, it, Jing is not, it's not a new restaurant. And I think that was the allure for me. New in uh, Las Vegas, though, right? It's, and it's new for Las Vegas, but it, it started 20 years ago. And our owner, Charlie, uh, created his first Jing over 20 years ago in, in Aspen. And then through the years, created two more restaurants in Denver. So we have three restaurants that are in Colorado. So that really made me feel a lot more confident. And um, of course, we picked a, a great location. So that, that helped as well. We weren't out in the boondock someplace. I mean, we were in, in, a, in, a, in a great mall that uh, had a lot of growth potential with Howard Hughes, of course. So. Right. And a very beautiful restaurant, I should say. Uh, Tom, you know, you've worked for some of the world famous chefs, um, as as well as, as you know, some local. You worked for Andre, right? I remember, I remember when Andre opened his first little French sandwich shop on uh, Merlin Parkway here um, yeah. by the university. Yeah. And uh, you remember that? You, yeah, I you, sure you were do. Those days, yeah. right? Yep. And that's where he started even before he went to Andre's downtown. Right. Absolutely. Right. I mean, Andre. Um, a lot of respect for him. He is uh, kind of hometown favorite. Um, you know, very classic French. I think my, my cuisine was, um, you know, I, I really got involved with French cuisine. I worked with Thomas Keller, uh, Bouchon, later in the French Laundry, a three-star Michelin in California. Anybody that I would know? Um, okay. yeah. <laughs> Michael Mina. Um, and then, you know, I had a, I had a lot of uh, great opportunities uh, to travel around. I, I worked in Miami for about five years. Um, five star, five diamond properties like the Satai Hotel, the Fountain Blue, kind of an iconic hotel. Um, that's where we opened with Michael Mina. Uh, did a couple restaurants there, and then I, I had the opportunity to go to San Francisco. Um, work, you know, I, I wanted to chase that that Michelin star, and wanted to chase the uh, the dreams of you know working in a real uh, a real city that had um, you know unlimited potential, and um, you know then after San Francisco, I had just, there was something about Vegas that allured me back, right? So my roots started here in Vegas. I did five here, five in Miami, and then I was in San Francisco, but I came back here um, because, you know, Vegas is a, is a great, it's an elephant stomping ground of great chefs, great restaurants, great service hospitality. Um, that's what drew me back. Ultimately, I got picked back up on the, on the Michael Mina Group team, and I went up on traveling team again, and I went to Chicago. Uh, we opened Bardot's uh, brother sister restaurant. It was called Margot uh, in the Gold Coast, and then uh, Michael decided that it was time for me to go to San Francisco or to go to, to Seattle and try the Pacific Northwest for about a year or so. Um, so after I did that, uh, SBE and uh, Sam Narzarian from um, uh, SBE um, and SLS Hotels had an opportunity out in the Bahamas. Uh, they paired me up with the world famous butcher. His name is Dario Cicchini. Um, and if you guys watch Chef's Table, if you get an opportunity, watch Chef's Table on Netflix. 
Uh, there's a story, it's a, it's a beautiful story about a seventh generation butcher. Uh, I had that opportunity to go and learn, you know, how to really uh, do some old school butchery. So a lot of classic French, but along the way, um, you know, worked through different restaurants with the Michael Mina group uh, into some really amazing, um, you know, butchery talents and skills and brought that. Uh, I came back here to Vegas again for a third time. So, and then here. And, and everything you said about Vegas and about, you know, the <clears throat> restaurant capital, the chefs, all the great um, food that is here leads to my next question. With all the competition, I mean, it's very risky to open up a new restaurant. And, and, and quite honestly, yep. it's a little bit um, like when you look at the menu, it's a little bit different than a typical restaurant. I mean, how would you how would you describe the restaurant? I mean, is it fish, sushi? Is it not? Well, is it I, you know, it's a good how we would describe our restaurant, I think, is it's globally influenced. Um, we have uh, prime steaks, um, fresh seafood and then sushi. Right. So uh, it's a globally influenced menu that really is is kind of three restaurants in one. We have uh, kind of that steakhouse, um, you know, quality and, and high end luxury steaks. And then we have beautiful fresh seafood and sushi, um, as well as some wok dishes and noodles. So it's got a little bit of the Asian uh, wok rice, noodles, fried rice, and stuff like that, that it is an encompassing of all. So it's a globally influenced high-end luxury brand, for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, yeah, I mean, so what was the word you, global? What did you, globally influenced. Globally yeah. influenced, got it. Okay. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty... It's pretty uh, and, and it is. I mean, it's now at the same time, it's got an ambiance to it. It's um, I mean, it's it's very cool. It's got right? a good vibe. It's very, it's very hip. Yeah. Vibe right? dining. You got um, is um, it's um, a lot of chatter going on. It's a place to be seen. It's a place to go. Yep. Right. DJ. DJ. You got nightly crowd. DJ. You we got, have a party got, brunch on Sundays. Busy bar. Very busy right? bar. Um, but, anyway, but Charlie won again. He wanted to create that feng shui. So if you look at the restaurant, we have the fire on one side and water on the other, and the, the colors it's it's black on one side and white on the other. So it's it's got that that chi going. So that, and that's what Charlie yeah, wanted to create. Yeah. And Charlie always says, you know, Jing, the name Jing. Is it Jing or Jing? Jing. Yeah, Jing. Not Ying. Jing. Jing. It I'm saying it wrong. Jing. Okay. Jing. Okay. It represents uh, energy. Right. So good energy, good flow. And again, like what Roy was saying, um, the yin and yang, right, the positive um, and the black and the white, the fire and the ice, the fire and the water. Um, and that's that's really what I think when people come in here, they feel that, you know, they feel that we have high energy. It's a, um, you know, very sexy restaurant. Um, and then the music is, is always like kind of gets you moving. It makes you it makes you feel welcome. Well, plus, and we also took, you know, obviously, the star of the show is obviously Chef's Food, which is amazing. I mean, his culinary skills are the best I've ever seen. What we've also tried to create in the front of the house is we go by Ford standards, because that's what I did at, at the Wind Corporation for 30 years. So when you come in, you feel good, and, and, and you love the vibe, and then your staff is always smiling, and, and they're, they're engaging. They're genuine. And I think that's really what's, what's setting us apart. So by the time they sit down, they're having a great time. And of course, when the food hits, it's like, right. wow. So, so uh, okay, I'm counting three different um, um, ingredients here. You got uh, the food and the quality of the, of the food. You have the ambiance and you have the customer service. Right? Is that, is that, you put those three together? And yeah, if you put those three together, I mean, if you fail with, with three great components like that, then I mean, shame on you. Yeah. You know, if you can't make it work with, with a great chef and Forbes standards and an in in ambiance in a restaurant, that's really one of a kind here in Las Vegas. You know, I'm, I'm looking uh, right behind you is this big sign, neon sign, Roy's Wine Collection. Yes. What's that about? <laughs> you know, when, uh, when, when Charlie created the concept, he really wanted to be wine centric. And so we, we spent months trying to figure out how to become more palatable to, the, to our local clientele. So we wanted to create a wine list that would rival any strip property. <clears throat> Obviously, we don't have the, the deep pockets that the strip resorts do. But uh, we thought, you know what, we're going to personalize it. And, and, and I'm a wine guy. I'm a psalm. And uh, we just said, hey, why don't we call it Roy's Wine Cellar? And that kind of evolved into Roy's Wine Collection. And we actually carry 4,000 bottles of wine. Wow. We have almost 500 different selections on the list. And 
you know, guests can come in and have a, a $9 glass of Gambino, or you can fire it up and have a bottle of Dom Perignon. So we have a little something for everybody. Yeah. And I know that, uh, unlike a lot of uh, restaurants in town, that um, you're flying fish in here every day, basically? Yeah. Is, yeah that's that's got to be, you know, something got to stay on top mm -hmm. of, right? I mean, Absolutely. Um, you know, what we... What we really did when I, when I first kind of came on and, and focused on was uh, product, 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 right? So uh, we want to be very competitive with the, the strip quality products, right? Because people go to the strip and they expect high end. They expect, you know, if you're going to pay a, a high price tag, you know you better get what you, you pay for. So same thing here. We you know, I came in with that same mentality of like, let's get the best but we're not going to gouge. We're not going to price gouge anyone. Um, and so I used a lot of the same uh, amazing purveyors. And then in terms of like keeping it sustainable, um, the great thing is, is that our restaurant's busy, you know, every single day. So we get fish every single day <laughs> and it's a not, it's a, you know, a nonstop process of, um, and we'll show you some of the bluefin that came in today. It's, it's, it's mm. incredible. You, you, um, you'd be remiss not to talk about the omakase. Sure. What you do yeah. on Thursday. So we actually, the chef is, he'll let you know, tell you about the yeah, fish so, he flies in. So Thursday, you know, we, Charlie wanted to, the, our owner wanted to talk and do a bunch of activations on, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then Thursday came about, we're like, well, what are we going to th do for Thursday? Um, we actually have a fishmonger that's in Japan. And every Thursday, or every Wednesday, sorry, they'll go to the market in Tuskegee and, and they'll find um, and, I and it's kind of dealer's choice, right? I let them, I say, you guys are the, you know, you're the professional fishmonger. Um, they choose a six to seven different type of fish, throw it on some ice in a box. The thing arrives the next day, literally in the morning at 12. And we're, we're butchering fish that's been out of water for, um, you know, less than, you know, 14, 15 hours. So that's huge on our part uh, to be able to do that. And the reach, then that means... Um, you know, it's something that's different. I think that there's a lot of uh, good purveyors here in, in Las Vegas, but in order for us to go a step further, we went straight to the source in Japan. So we have that reach to where we want to do some omakase, where it means the Jap you know, leave it in the hands of the chef. We're going to give you the best Japanese fish. We're going to give you some amazing, um, uh, you know, amazing fish from really uh, uh, local, lo some, so some stuff that's sourced Locally, and by mean locally, I mean like Pacific Northwest right. or like in the Atlantic and in our oceans here. So well, I got to tell you the, the 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 fish here. I mean, I've eaten the sushi here. Thank I've you. eaten that miso cod and the snapper, and uh, just phenomenal. But I wanted to ask you about um, um, fish, uh, mm -hmm. raw fish, sushi fish. Sure. How do you how do you know um, as a customer? When you're walking in and getting a, a tuna or a yellowtail, how do, you, how do you know? Can you look at it and tell the, or smell it? Is there a way to tell the quality? I mean, it's, uh, definitely the nose. If it, if, it, if it punches you in the nose and it smells a little, little off, then I keep away from it for sure. Um, but visually, if you see something in, um, in fish, what we look for is, is the firmer that the fish is, the flesh, generally that denotes that's, the, that's fresher because it's been out of water less, right? So the, mu the muscle's still uh, tight. Um, it hasn't had a lot of movement. It hasn't been thrown around and, um, you know, it's been taken care of. And, and that's what we really do when we inspect our fish is we inspect the gills to make sure that the, the, the um, you know, still has a healthy gill to it. Uh, we inspect the eyes to make sure they're clear and not cloudy. And then the firmness of the fish itself, as long as it has a good, should have a bounce, almost like a football or like a basketball, you should be able to feel that. If it feels deflated, and th this is something you can do in the supermarket too. You know, if you go to the supermarket and you see something that's, that's starting to fall apart, it's denaturing, it's uh, probably not the freshest Look piece of these words I'm learning. De <laughs> denaturing, uh, what was it on the global? Uh... Globally. <laughs> and globally influenced. Globally. <laughs> we, we, we like to stay cutting edge here yeah, at Jake. So. What's, what's, when, you're, when you're starting a new restaurant, what's the most difficult part? Is it... Uh, is it hiring the staff? Is it um, creating the menu? Is it finding the location? <laughs> well, we were lucky that we, that we did have the location to begin with, but I think the most difficult part is finding that staffing, you know, from, from your dishwashers to your servers and busters and then into your junior managers. Uh, Vegas is a, is a big city, but believe it or not, the talent pool 
is very small. Even in the restaurant, and we're dealing in a culinary business where we have the, the first or second best culinary school in the country, right? UNLV. It really, it, it's really difficult. And I, I have a standard set of questions that I, like I ask servers. Mm -hmm. And only one out of 10 would even pass that, that first level for me, you know? And so staffing the restaurant is by far the most difficult part. Yeah, and, and you have to hire the, the kitchen crew, I assume? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, same thing. I mean, we have a set of core, um, you know, questions. And then we also take, take our, our junior members or our cooks down through like a practical examination. You know, I want to make sure you can, you can the knife cuts are, are right. right. You know, how you compose yourself on the line. Can you cook a piece of fish? You know, a lot of times I, I, have, um, I have them cook an omelet for me. Because eggs, if you know how to cook an omelet perfectly and, and it's not like burnt or, you know, whatnot, like generally like if you can cook eggs, you, you understand how to control heat, you know. And that's the biggest, the biggest thing for us as chefs is the three T's, the um, time, temperature, and then taste, right? So time is always like, it's always a race against time. Um, was it cooked long enough, you know, was it, uh, did it need less cook on it? Uh, temperature, is it hot, is it cold, is it medium rare, is it rare, um, uh, is it well done? And then finally, um, taste, right? That sets the difference between good and great. Sometimes the difference between good and great for me, I think it's just salt, pepper, you know, seasoning is, is really a, a, bit, a big part of being a chef. And of course, the, the time works into um, when, you know, the, the time lapse to get served as well for the customer. Exactly. So, I mean, exactly. is there a, um, um, a paradigm that you have or a standard that you have on yep. how quickly you want the food to come out for some, is there a magic time? 100%. What, yep. is, what is that magic time? Um, I mean, the magic number is always three. And so, in, not, three, and, three, and right. so th three minutes is, is very fast, right? Yeah. Um, but we do in, in, in threes of like, uh, generally it would take about six minutes from the time that it comes into the system right? And the time that we will get it out, it's, it has to be six minutes or less, right? And then it once after three minutes after that, it hits the yellow zone, which is nine minutes, and then 12 minutes would be the red zone. So that's well, like... And the other thing too is I think what we do better than a lot of our competitors is that we do customize, you know, the, the service to the guest. Sure. Does a guest want to have a quick dinner because they're going to the ball game? Or do they want to sit and relax? It's a date night, so they, want to, they don't want to be rushed. So that's really the secret in the server, figuring out exactly what type of dining experience that guest wants. And that's conveyed now then to the chef. Absolutely. And then he can tailor that so, timing to that table. Yeah. So some people, you know, some people want to sit down and, and enjoy it. A beautiful bottle of Chateau Margot Lafitte Rothschild right. with a, um, you know, a good first course and, and just kind of hang out, relax and enjoy that, that, uh, that wine. And we're not going to press anyone. We're not going to push them. Another um, table may want to go over to the ballpark, catch a game. Uh, but yeah, but yeah, I mean, then you get the then you get the ballpark table, yeah, or you get the the, the um, hey, I got to run, uh, and we need this ASAP, and you know, we try and do our best to uh, to facilitate that. But again, I think you know, you can't rush good food, um, and you can't rush uh, as much as we say, like you know, six is a magic number or three is a magic number. Um, we 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 want to make sure it's right. You know, well, so let's, let's go take a look at the place where you create all these magic numbers. Okay, cool. Great. So come on through. We're going to show you the walk side. Uh, this is where all of our uh, fried rice, our noodles. Um, we do uh, anything from like a Thai basil chicken, uh, wok fried shrimp, um, garlic noodles, uh, lo mein. This is going to be all over here. It, this kitchen is really uh, separated into three different parts. In the wok section is really important because that gives the Cantonese style. It gives the, the Chinese element um, to our menu. Uh, but then also we venture into Thailand with dishes, like I said, Thai basil. Um, and then you also have you know, some black pepper tenderloin. So, all right, Lee, give us a little fire, huh? There it is. So. So, you know, that, that, that fire is going to bring a lot of the good flavor and that wok dishes really need to have that high heat. The high temperature is going to give all that um, delicious caramelized meat, right. caramelized vegetables, and it's, it's really the, the, the secret sauce to the wok side, right? 
Wow, and that's how quickly it made and that's, that. And that's, yeah, I mean, that's... That's, so, the, that's the three minute rule. That's the three minute that's rule. That's that's why we say that's our that's our three minute rule. Um, so wow. It is a, a, a beautiful Looks question. delicious. When you're cooking like this, man, you could be out there in the public cooking like this and people will just love this. Yeah. So that's one part of the kitchen, right? That's that's really our, our uh, wok and fried fried rice and noodles. Over here, this is our sushi station. Um, we have Chef Will. Um, William is a, a, uh, our master sushi chef. I can show you, I think we're, we're trimming up some fresh uh, Japanese hamachi. So um, this gets cut daily. Like I said, it's, it's really about freshness and the quality has to be 100% uh, fresh every single day. Um, and Will, uh, as long as, as well with the rest of the team, uh, there's Tommy on the back side. Tommy, say hello here. There you go, see? So Tommy's making some spicy tuna and then William is, is cutting the sashimi for um, one of our most popular dishes, the Yelltail Serrano. It's done with grapefruit um, and a sudachi soy, a little bit of uh, Serrano chilies and a Serrano chili oil. It's really one of those home run dishes. So, I right. know when I asked you about how do you identify good fish, um, uh -huh. you know, I may not know how to, so how to identify it, but when I see it, I know it, right? right? And you can look at this fish and know this is like the, as good a quality as you can possibly 100%. find. Yeah. You can see how firm it is, number one. You can see also then the clarity, the color is, is nice and bright. There's no oxidation. You want to see the blood, you can see the bloodline still has, a, has that red coloration. Right. If you start to see it start to turn gray or it starts to turn a different, like from pink or red to a lighter shade or to that grayer side, then you know it's oxidized and it's no longer at a sushi sashimi level um, or a, a 10, 10 level. So hey, okay. feel feel free to send what he's cutting off over to okay. my over to my house. What he's throwing away. Okay, <laughs> we'll do. Um, and then so really the other the other section over here, and we've got Lucio. Who's, uh, Lucio is is our other uh, premier sous chef. So um, this is our grill section. So. A lot of you, um, do you have any ribeyes or anything we could pull out and take a look at? We have some ribeyes, some of the ribeyes we just cut right inside here. So you asked like, what does it take and what's the special sauce to, to have the best of the best? Well, um, when we get our deliveries and when we get uh, uh, fish and or meat, we really want to focus on keeping it as fresh as possible. So we bring this in the back and this is our receiving area essentially. And what happens in here is uh, this is gonna be a temperature controlled room that has uh, at least 36, uh, 36 to 38 degrees. You can see we're cutting here some Snake River Farms ribeye caps. Um, there's New York strip loins here. Uh, I could throw on some gloves, but you can feel the temperature in this room is great because um, again, we can cut fish, right? We have Glacier 51 that is uh, flown in from Antarctica. Uh, here's a, a nice, nice beautiful steak that we just cut today and again um, you know Ed this is this is the difference when we cut a steak and you're seeing like we're cutting it right now what we cut today is what we're gonna serve today and that um, I firmly believe you know working with Dario Cicchini the butcher you don't have any stuff that's sitting in blood and you know it, it's sitting there weeping this stuff has been cut fresh it's not oxidized it's beautifully uh, marbled it's got that uh, Creekstone Farms Prime USDA Premium Black Angus stamp on it. So how, how, how much that? Uh, how many ounces is this? This is like a that? 16 ounce ribeye, right? So a nice, beautiful cap there, and then the center eye itself. Um, I can cut into this one here, and you can see this is a New York strip loin. So we're going to cut. This is the short loin side off, but um, you can see like the again that beautiful marbling. It's really great, all prime premium black Angus. Wow, um, yeah. And we do have, let's see if we can cut this one open. Uh, Snake River Farms, that's a, a, a producer from I, Idaho. It's uh, the guy that basically is doing the best, the best domestic beef that you can get right now is either coming from Snake River or Mishima. And we have both of those cuts both of those producers are actually on our menu. So here you can see fresh out, out of the package. Yeah. It's uh, the entire rib cap. And we'll cut down through just so you can see the level of, mar of marbling here and what we're achieving there, right? 
So what we'll, what we'll do is we'll cut this into a nice steak. This is about an eight, eight ounce portion here. And again, fresh, hand cut, butcher style steaks. This is what sets us, you know, really, it's a special sauce. Sets us a uh, apart from the rest. This steak will get cooked tonight and go out to one of our beautiful Summerlin guests. Over here then, uh, this is, uh, this is a, a, a beautiful sea bass. Oh yeah, it is beautiful. Um, yeah. So we do Chilean, uh, a Chilean sea bass, but you know, Patagonian toothfish, the original Chilean sea bass. This was something that's fished out of Antarctica, right? So it's uh, uh, the sea bass itself, when we get it in, Whoa, we buy, yeah. and it's a beautiful, and you, you see the, the firmness is what, what I was talking about. The firmness of, of the flesh of the fish is beautiful. And you see, I can take back the, the, um, the skin just like that. But this sea bass here is probably one of the, we, we are one of the only restaurants uh, in town. I, I, I do think Nobu might serve this, but I think we are one, one of the only other premier um, purveyor, or, Restaurants that will actually take this in. Cool. Now, I've, uh, you know that little game, Duck, Duck, Goose? Duck, Duck, Goose, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, so, so look, so, um, I mean, you know, obviously, uh, Duck is uh, on our menu. This is Cantonese style. This is not a Swanson uh, TV dinner. This is a, <laughs> this is a Peking Duck, I mean, what we're what we're achieving here is what we've done is we've, we've dry aged it or sorry sorry we've, we've um, salt cured it for one day uh -huh. right and after then we want to dry the skin so you can actually feel the skin is is drying um, and that's what creates the crispy duck right, right? that you, that everyone loves that like crunch crispy on the outside tender on the inside. tender on the inside yep. exactly so uh, it takes three days process to get here and we do have to um, you know maintain it at, at this. Uh, uh, perfect consistency that way we do have a beautiful uh, crispy skin duck nice I mean this is one of the this has become like a landmark everybody's taking photos out here when they eat at uh, Jing right and um, and uh, hey I forgot to I gotta ask I gotta ask I understand you have an uncle I do Bob, yeah. Bob <laughs> Greasy is your uncle Bob Greasy is my uncle the only still undefeated uh, uh, season of the Dolphins in '72. So, you know, yep. hey, so we all know Bob Greasy. Okay, we're all about we're all about champions and, and being a champion. I'm I'm a champion here for Jing. So, um, definitely, uh, you know, um, yeah, yeah, it's it's a pretty cool thing. So, hey, come see uh, Chef uh, Tom uh, Greasy or uh, man general manager, right, uh, Roy Saunders. No, but this is, uh, you know, this is one of the finest restaurants in town, and it's right here in your backyard in Summerlin. So, hey, come check it out. We'll see you here. Yeah, thank you.